you know, we go and see a concert or a movie. We don't expect it to last forever. (laughs) Or we go on holiday. And then afterwards, you can think back on it and go, oh, that was such a nice time. doing okay so I have a question about for this relationship that I was talking about a few weeks ago but it kind of like ended a few days ago just because of the distance right but yes. basically I had I feel like I have questions that like don't really have an answer you know like things mm-hmm. that keep happening again and again so it was like why it happened because there was no reason to be apart apart from the distance but that's happened a few times so mm-hmm. yeah I just need help with that basically but I don't really know where to go All right. Yes, of course. So well done for asking that question. And I'm sorry that you're going through that because I know that can feel quite intense as well. So first of all, actually, what I want to point out is it is perfectly natural and human to feel a sense of loss or sadness or that kind of thing. You know, those feelings when something ends, when a relationship ends or someone passes away or that kind of thing, that's or there are other changes, losing a job, that kind of thing. So it's Acknowledging that's normal. So it's not that you shouldn't be feeling it or that you should try and stop feeling it. The first thing is acknowledging it and respecting those feelings and going, yes, you know, it's natural for me to feel this. And then also looking ahead and looking ahead to where you want to feel completely self sufficient and that you are in a position where you're able to appreciate the relationship you had, but that you're not feeling loss or longing or sadness or anything like that. So that's what you're aiming for, of course. But when you think of the fact that this relationship has ended and you're thinking of what it means or or generally, what is in your head? Where's your mind going? I think it's just like why it ended. Why it ended? Because uh-huh. I feel like, so the situation is, as I described before, he's moving to Australia to do his like <laughs> PhD, which is bad because if I was in the same situation, I had a dream, I would follow it regardless. Yes. But then I, I'm just thinking, I didn't know he was going to Australia two months ago, but he knew. So why did he get into it and then betray me like that? So that's, oh. I, yeah, a sense of like betrayal or like I didn't know, so I couldn't choose because I was too yes. when I found out. That makes perfect sense. Okay. So the meaning that your brain has given it is that he did this to betray you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And that's highly unlikely, right? No, yeah. So no. what do you think logically would have been the reason he didn't tell you in the beginning? Well, okay, so this person doesn't know, like, what was going on, what was going to happen. And I always need to know what's going to happen. So initially, it was he applied for this job in London and got the job. And then he was like, oh, now I'm turning down the job. Now I want to stay in education, do a PhD, but I want to do it in Australia. (laughs) Okay. And then I thought, oh, no, no, it will be fine. And then I kind of, like, I was in in denial, like, for like a month. Mm. And that's when I couldn't leave, basically. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the first piece here is recognizing that it wasn't him doing something to you. Right. So the reason that's important is so that you don't feel those kind of feelings. Someone is being horrible to me. It's recognizing that was the situation. And of course, his reasoning was, you know, like you said, it's his dream or he didn't know he was going to. Or even if he had deliberately not told you, it would have been more likely that it was because he was worried you wouldn't want to be in a relationship with him Mm. if he told you, you know, if that was the case. And That is not necessarily, you know, the right thing to do. And it's not ideal, but it's not, it's not mean. It's not, you know, with bad intentions. It's just, he wanted to be in a relationship with you. So answering that logic and recognizing those things helps to bring down those stress chemicals and change that perception. So you feel betrayed. So what would you have preferred to have happened instead? Well, for him to stay, but I know that's, that's not reasonable. But then I just think, right. I, I was just more annoyed that my brain is drawn to distance again and again. Right. Like, okay. Yeah. What you're saying, your insight here is that your brain picked up on the fact that this was going to be another situation. 
of long where distance someone or like of long moving distance. away. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And does that remind you of anything? Oh, yeah, a lot of it was just my parents, and it was a lot of anger, but I haven't really yes. written a due justice on it. Um, oh, okay. yeah. All right, yes. So the fact that you, how old were you when your parents left you in India and went to the UK? Like five. Five, yeah. So at five years old, you had, that was your first long distance relationship, and it was a significant one. Yeah. Right. And there was no, you had no control and you didn't know what was happening. Right. No. You weren't consulted. You weren't told about it. No. You had no say in it. No. And now your brain is recreating that. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. But I don't know what's missing from it. Like, okay. What, what pieces are still to clear up? All right. And the missing piece may be the due justice letter. So you mentioned that you haven't done a due justice to your parents for, for that particular event. I would say that's the place to start, especially if you're still experiencing anger in this relationship situation. Because okay. in this situation now, as you're experiencing this relationship ending and everything that goes with it, the circumstances around it, your brain is referring to, of course, that situation with your parents and then pumping stress chemicals into your system, creating yeah. that anger. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Very good. And then let's just check in on, on the references that are there now for your parents. So as you think of that time in your life, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you were five years old? Yeah, so this was like a thing that came up was um like looking at the stuff like because we used to sleep on like the rooftop and looking at the stars and just crying, you know, like oh. where are my parents? And then my auntie would be like, Oh, you know, they're up in the sky, like they're flying, like they flew away or some something about flying and stuff. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. So have you ever addressed that? Have you ever changed that? Because I, I know we've ignoring, changed the airport and that, but I think just, to... I'm just ignoring everything that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you're just ignoring i'm just ignoring pieces that come up like i yes yeah like the rest yeah of yeah and this is so that's key that's such a key moment i mean it's key that you're ignoring those pieces and then that particular piece is you know significant of course so let's change it shall we <laughs> okay all right so let's go to that moment so you're you're on the rooftop and you're looking at the stars, your aunt is with you and the little you is crying. As you think of that now, are there any negative emotions? Yeah, devastating. It's like devastating. That, like that cry that you can't stop. That yes. Kind of, yeah. 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 Very good, sweetheart. Okay. So, and about how strong are those emotions? Zero to 10. Like eight. Eight. Okay. Good job. And what we're aiming for is we're aiming for the fact that the end, the end final memory that I'd like to end up with is that it's you and your parents lying on the roof watching the stars. That's the end result we're aiming for. So let's go to your favorite color is white, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I remembered. Very good. All right. And what's your subject that you're using? I kind of flip between like the sea and like a baby. Okay. And which would you prefer to use today? A baby. A baby. Fantastic. All right. So take a deep breath and go into your superpower state, however you normally do that. Imagine being surrounded by that beautiful white. And I know you're surrounded by a lot of people right now, but see if you can just focus on the white. You got that? And the feeling of the white. Good job, sweetheart. And now I want you to imagine the cutest baby you've ever seen. And imagine holding that baby in your arm and really focus in on what it is you love about babies. What's lovable about them? You got that? Ah, lovely. Very good. So you're feeling the chubby soft baby and how wonderful that is, the connection that you have there. You got that? Very good. Good job. And now press pause on that. And let's go back to that rooftop. And so there's the little you looking up at the stars with your aunt and the negative emotions were an eight. Where are they now? They're five. Five. Good job. All right. Let's press pause on that. Let's go back to the white, surrounded by white. And think about what you love about white. Why white is your favorite color? 
what it is about white that's so nice for you. And see if you can feel the feeling of the white. And then hug that little baby again and notice how cute their face is, how soft and chubby they are and how smooth their skin and how soft a baby's skin is and how wonderful that is. You got that? Very good, good job. And press pause on that and let's go back to the rooftop. And the negative emotions were a five. Where are they now? They're gone. They're gone. Good job, sweetheart. Very good. All right. So now let's look at the scene. So there's you looking up at the stars and there's your aunt. First of all, so I'm going to put a stepping stone in here now that your aunt is actually saying to you, you're saying, where are my parents? And your aunt is saying, they're up there, they're coming home. So they're actually flying home, not away. Does that make sense? Yeah. How would that feel first? Like Exciting. That's what we want. She says, so there that, you know, they're coming, the airplane is up there, they're coming home and we've got it. But now we must go and get ready to go to the airport to fetch them. Okay. Yeah. Good. Very good. So that's perfect. That's a great, that's what we're looking for is excitement. Practice that one, that stepping stone over and over. Now let's see if we can go on to the final memory. So the final memory is your parents are either side of you and you're all lying on the rooftop looking up the stars and in fact one of them is pointing out your dad or your mom pointing out the different constellations and there's a it's a meteor shower that's right it's a meteor shower and that's what you're there for you're all there to watch the meteor shower how would that feel and you've got refreshments and things you're making a little bit of a party out of it how would that be yeah good but but i can't feel like the same excitement as them coming Okay. All right. So let's do this. You've got the stepping stone where you're with your aunt. Now they've just come home. So you've been to the airport, you fetched them, and now you're on the roof. They're talking about their trip and they're giving you presents from England, the, the sort of souvenir things. And the event that is now happening on that roof is the happiness with your parents. How would that feel? Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. good, good, good. Yay. So then you want to establish that, make it so that your brain is now connecting, you know, that rooftop with that happy, exciting, those two happy, exciting events. Yeah. Got that? Uh -huh. Very good. Good job. So when you think of that five-year-old you and that whole time in your life, what's there now? It feels better for sure. Like good. I can already feel the difference because like at good. this point, I'm like struggling to find what's missing. Yes. Like in terms of like my parents leaving, which is only good because yes. that means most of it's cleared. Absolutely. Um, so it feels that is much great. better, but I don't know what else, like what more. Okay. So as you think of that time, if we just focus on the feelings of it, is it all good feelings or are there any negative feelings there? It's neutral. Okay. Neutral. All right. So what do you think would be that little you? So let's say, let's put the little five-year-old you in front of you. And I want you to ask her what she still needs. Yeah. So I want my parents to always be there, mm -hmm. but I feel like, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what that feels like. And so mm -hmm. therefore like any attention and stuff, like something's not making sense to be able to create it because I'm yeah. struggling to like feel it and then put it in I think yes okay very good all right so let's create a couple of scenes so we've I know we created a memory of you going with them when they left is yeah. that still there that's still established good good all right so that's that now let's go to when they were leaving so they're packing do you have a memory where you are packing as well you're all packing so the preparation is for all of you to go Good. All right. And let's go back then a little further before the packing. Any memories that lead up to that moment when they were preparing to leave? Any other people talking about it or anything come up? And if not, that's okay. Yeah. So it was when they didn't tell me they were leaving, but then we did a bit. They sit down and ask me. And then mm -hmm. I say, no, I want you to stay here. And they do say, yeah. So when they stay here, I can't feel them staying. Ah. Like, I can't feel their presence. 
Yes. Okay. Very good. If let's pretend they did stay. So if they had stayed, just kind of logically, what do you think life would have been like? Amazing. <laughs> amazing. Parents, it would be amazing. Yeah. What sort of memories do you think you'd have now if that was the case? If it had worked out that way? Of them like picking me up from school, like dropping me off, like having my lunch, attending my dance competition. Very good. And do you have those memories? I think I have them in the UK. My ah. brain is a bit confused that it didn't happen there. There yeah. you go. So let's create them in India. Okay. So it's the same school that you went to, uh-huh. but both your parents, they take you to school. They wake you up in the morning. They do breakfast. Yeah. Then they help you get ready for school. Uh-huh. They take you to school. They're there waiting for you when you come out. They take you to your dance lessons. They're there for every performance. Yeah. How would that feel? So I need to create the same thing, but in India. How does that work? Like, (laughs) how do I know the location? Okay. The thing is you want both Mm -hmm. because the unconscious part of your brain doesn't use logical reason. So it won't go, but hold on a minute. You were in a different country, right? It's the conscious mind that does that. So the unconscious part of the brain will just treat these as separate pieces of data that all coexist. The way to anchor these things in other words, link them to the particular country would be whatever school you went to in England. It's that school there, first of all, for the English ones that your parents attend. So you can imagine being at whatever that school gate looks like, whatever activities you did at that school, then put your parents in all of those. And then in India, the same thing, the house in India the school in India, which of course would look different, presumably, and have a different feeling about it, different atmosphere. And so connect those pieces of data with your parents being there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. And keep reminding yourself, these are separate pieces of data. They can coexist. They can all be there at the same time. Yes. How does that feel? Yeah, that feels good. Yeah. Good. Very good. So now the next thing we want to do. So you want to, of course, practice those memories, establish them. The rooftop one, as well as these other pieces that we're putting in now that your par- to make sure that your parents were there all along. Then moving forward, when you think of this relationship, you know, the ending of the relationship, the fact that he's going to Australia, all of that, I want you to immediately play those new memories of your parents being there all along. As you you think of him or the relationship or Australia or whatever, immediately play a new memory of you, your parents waiting to pick you up from school and they're smiling and they're going to take you out before you go home. You know, those kinds of things. So build up that and the excitement one on the rooftop. Yes. All right. So that you're linking all of those references with this current experience of this relationship. How does that sound? Yeah. Because I've been redirecting my focus, but then I'm like, I'm just rehearsing bookmark memory because I was like, I don't know what else. And that's good when you when you're not sure what else to do. Absolutely use the bookmark memories, but and then this will be even better, even more effective, of course. So as you think of the relationship now, how do you feel? I think I still need the two chapters left. Ah yes, yes, that's right. You're going to do that that first. That will release a lot of the anchor. Very good. Okay, so yeah, do the due justice. That's your next priority do you justice based on that and then establish those new memories the rooftop and then the other bits and pieces sound good once you've done that then just test it for yourself so do all that first and then think of the relationship and notice how you notice if there's any difference etc and then you know work on that until you're able to think of that relationship and feel only appreciation and like ah yeah that was a good time So remembering that there are plenty of things in our lives that are transient. You know, we go and see a concert or a movie. We don't expect it to last forever. (laughs) Or we go on holiday and then afterwards you can think back on it and go, ah, that was such a nice time. But you're not feeling like it should have lasted forever. And of course, relationships, we're looking for a long-term relationship, but see this one as part of your journey. Yeah. I think a part of me is also like, this was really, really good. And it might not happen again for a while. But then I also realized that it was all me. It's all me. Right. Yes, <laughs> like exactly. Right now I can feel the same thing. 
with or without him. But I just need to remind myself. Yes. Yeah. Good job, Swasti. That's exactly, that's perfect, sweetheart. And well done for reminding yourself of that. Mm. And it's true. That's the truth. Good job, you. And thank you so much for the questions thank and you. safe journey home. Thank you. And all the best for the exam tomorrow. We'll be thinking of you and sending love. Good job, sweetheart. You're very, very welcome.